Okay, now for the fun part. We're going to start with the first wash. This is a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. You'll notice that you can barely see the sketch there. That's because I've mostly erased it. Um, the pencil lines will show through, so you, you want to you erase it, but you still need to be able to see it, so you need to leave it barely there. Okay, adding in that that sort of yellowish gold color that we saw in the photo reference. We're using little brush strokes and for the most part we are going to let the water blend the gold into the white. I want the entire white body to be covered with this wet watery mixture. So I'm just going to go around and make sure that the entire body has this nice light gray and light gold color on it. And then we're going to mix up a dark mixture for the black parts. It will be a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and a touch of Queen Rose. Go ahead and put that in in what I call the chin area. This is quite a dark area. I am not quite touching that white area with my brush yet. I'm putting in little tiny brush strokes that are sort of like little tiny feathers. Again, I'm staying away from the white until I decide to soften this with a slightly damp brush that I am just barely touching the line in between those two, in between the light and the dark there. And this um, softening of the line gives it a more natural sort of organic look to the bird. Putting in the white part in between the top of the head and the chin area Again, I'm not really touching that black area with my brush yet. I'm trying to stay away from it. If you touch that dark black area with too much water too soon, all the black will flow right into the white area. I'm marking off where that wing is there. And now I'm just going to go in and just barely touch those two spaces together again. I do want it to flow, but just enough to soften the line and to make it look the way the bird looks. The top of the head is that same dark color with the burnt sienna, the ultramarine blue, and a touch of quim rose. I am going to try and follow the line that I saw in the photo reference, which is not a straight line, but a curved line. And then I need to take a little bit of that pigment off the top of the head, because that's where the sunlight hits the bird, and it's not quite as dark there. So I took some of the pigment off my brush with a paper towel, and I ran across the top little tiny lines. I want the little tiny bird feathers on the top of the head because the top of the bird's head has little tiny feathers. It's not a ping pong ball. He's got little tiny bird feathers there. Again, I'm dropping some more dark pigment into the chin area. Uh, I was getting a little too light. And now I need to soften the edge between the top of the head and the white area underneath the top of the head. So I'm going to take a damp brush and I'm just going to barely touch that line. I don't want too much paint to flow into the white area, so I don't want the white area to be too wet. Right now I'm actually using a dry brush, well, a slightly dry brush, and I'm picking up some of that um, water as I touched the white area. When you, um, 
when you pull the water out of the area, it, it doesn't, it'll help stop the flow of the pigment into that area. Right now, I just drag it off so that no more pigment flows into that white space. You have to be careful when you're touching your painting with a paper towel. I did not touch the black spot. I only touched the white spot. Getting the shape of the wing in, it is a burnt sienna, an ultramarine blue, and a touch of queen gold. It's a much more brownish, lighter color than the black spot, the black parts of the bird. The uh, tail feathers are that same lighter, more brownish color. And we're going to add those in, in a couple of quick strokes. Right now, everything looks like separate pieces. It doesn't really look like a bird. It looks like different component parts of a bird, but we'll fix that in a minute. Running a slightly damp brush along the top of the bird's wing because the top of the wing is less heavily pigmented, so I didn't put as much pigment on my brush. I'm putting little tiny feathers in now to connect the wing to the body. And I'm pretty happy with that. The tail feathers still need to be connected, but I'll do more of that in a minute. Mixing up a very light purplish gray now out of ultramarine blue, quim rose, and burnt sienna. The legs and the beak are both this same light purplish gray. Taking a little bit of liberty with how birds' feet look, I've sort of stylized the feet. That's not exactly how birds' feet look, but I kind of like that look, so it's just just how I like to paint bird feet. Okay, I'm connecting the tail feathers to the bird's body with a few small brush strokes. Again, like the feathers, I'm trying to run the way that the uh, feathers look on. Here we're putting in the beak with that purplish gray mixture. I'm not really um, painting the beak at this point so much as just marking out the area that it is, adding a few tiny little feathers. And I'm going to add a few brush strokes here to help define the body of the bird. I want to add a little more definition and a little more shape to the bird's body at this point. So I'm just using a slightly darker wash and I'm going over it being careful to make my brush strokes run along the contour, the shape of the bird. So I'm trying to make the brush strokes run the way I think the bird's feathers would run. I don't want to overdo this part. I, I want the bird to, um, I don't want him to look fussy. So I don't want to put down too many brush strokes here. You see, I need to add some darks though to the bottom of the wing because that is a much darker color than the top of the wing and I need that to get added at this point so that it blends together naturally. There, I like that a lot better. The top of the head also needed some correcting, so fortunately it's still wet enough for me to go in with a brush and correct the shape of the top of the head. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. I got the shapes in, everything looks fine, I'm going to let it dry. We'll come back in the next step and we'll add some detail and some definition to the bird. Okay, here we are doing the second and final layer of the bird. This layer will add the detail and bring the bird to life. For the most part, what we're doing here is adding some darks. So looking at the photo reference, you can see that underneath the bird's wing is darker. So I'm going in and I'm adding darkness underneath the wing. And I'm also adding a few lines to indicate the feathers on the top of the wing. When you're working in watercolor, you're always working from light to dark. Here we're adding dark on the bottom of the beak and not on the top of the beak because the top of the beak is where the sunlight hits it. The bottom of the beak is in shadow. I'm 
always looking at my painting to see what needs to be adjusted. Right now I'm adding a little lighter line along the edges, which indicates the top of the feather. And I'm adding some darks underneath, which indicates the bottom of the feathers. This gives a more 3D look to the bird. And I'm adding little tiny feathers along the wing to connect it to the body of the bird. Just making a few little corrections as I go along. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit of definition to the body of the bird now because I think it needs, it's reading too flat right now. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to add a little more darkness and a little more color. Again, always using my brush to go in the same direction that the feathers would go. Just add a few little tiny feathers here and there. I don't like to overdo this portion where you're adding little feathers because it takes away from that fresh modern vibe that I like in my style. I'm not trying to paint photorealistic birds. I'm looking at my bird to see what's needed and I think the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to lift color out around the eye just a little bit a little there's a little bit of um, lightness that you can see around the circle of the eye I did not go all the way around the eye when I scratched that scratched the light out there I just did a little bit along one edge and a little bit along the other edge and in the center of the eye I scratched out a little tiny white dot and that white dot um, you'll see that in any eye of any living creature you'll see little light reflection which shows up as a little white dot in the eye we're adding some shadow underneath the bird so that the bird is grounded not floating on the paper And those two things, adding the reflection in the eye and adding the shadow underneath the bird uh, are two things that you don't want to forget to do. I'm pretty happy with the chickadee now. So if you'd like to see more of these videos, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.